It's one of the key questions surrounding COVID-19. How long does immunity last? On this episode of Shareable Science Beyond the Blog, we'll look deeper into that question. Welcome to Shareable Science. Science you can share. From the earliest days of the pandemic, one key question, how long will immunity last? Either natural immunity, because I've had the virus and recovered, or immunity from the vaccine. In order to address that, let's remind ourselves of how the immune system works. Again, you've heard me say this before, I am not an immunologist. We are just skimming the surface. So apologies for the huge gaps in content that you don't see on this board. There are two parts to our immune response anytime our body is under attack from a foreign pathogen. The first is the innate response. It happens quickly, within a few hours. The challenge is it is not very specific. It is broad. It is just meant to be a first line of defense. It includes things like natural barriers like our skin that help keep infectious agents out. It also includes specialized immune cells like macrophages and, and dendritic cells that just look for invaders in, in unspecific ways. And then a whole set of chemicals, interferons, we've talked about those before, and other inflammatory inducing molecules that say, hey, there's an invader here. These cells are getting infected. We need backup. So that's the innate response. It sets the stage for the adaptive immune response. The adaptive immune response is specific it is the archery. It is the very specific, uh, it's the Navy SEALs. Maybe it's the, is it the Marine SEALs. Anyway, it's the special forces that come in and very specifically target exactly what the invader is. And those are your B cells and your T cells. Now, your B cells actually produce antibodies, these tiny proteins that stick onto whatever your invader is. And there are lots of different kinds of antibodies. We've talked about binding antibodies, and we've talked about neutralizing antibodies, which are the real key that you want. And then you've got your T cell responses, your helper T cells that help support the B cells in doing their job, and the killer T cells that actually find infected cells and specifically can tell this cell is infected with this pathogen and they destroy them, they wipe them out. It's a pretty impressive force when working together. Now, this takes a little bit longer, several days, maybe even a week. But like I said, it's specific and it also has memory. So your antibody levels, when you are in the immune response or after you've been vaccinated, they rise and they peak and they stay high for several weeks and then they begin to fall gradually or steeply. Um, and that's natural. That's exactly what normally happens. But some of your B and T cells, your memory B and T cells, they hang out in your bone marrow and they persist maybe even for years in some cases and they're circulating at low levels. And if there's an immediate, if there's a reinfection, they can quickly say, oh yeah, I've seen this before. I know what this is. And they mount a much faster immune response that takes it out at the knees. So the adaptive response, slower to start with, very specific, and it has this important memory component. So with that in mind, let's now talk about what we know about immunity for COVID-19. No pretty pictures on this side just a lot of text, but we can move our way through it pretty quickly. So how long will natural and vaccine-based immunity last? That's the key question. We still don't know. We still continue to see immunity as we check individuals that were infected in the early waves or were in the first stages of the clinical trials of the pandemic. So currently we see immunity lasting about 18 months from a natural perspective, 10 months from vaccine-based, and we continue to run these numbers, this, this uh, protection continues to this day. It's possible that this protection could last for years. It might be that you don't have to have any more booster shots. You don't have to worry about being infected again with COVID, with the SARS-CoV-2 virus. It's also possible that this immunity could fade after a couple of years. 
And it is also possible that the SARS-CoV-2 virus could just become one of the many cold-causing coronaviruses that just circulates around the world from year to year and is more of a nuisance than something that we have to worry about, and immunity becomes less of a concern. We have to wait and see to know the answer to this. It's important to note that even now, not everybody has the same level of immunity. Not everybody that recovers from a natural COVID infection, not everybody that gets a COVID-19 vaccination. There are lots of factors that influence that. Uh, for the vaccination, it seems to be influenced in part by if you are on immunosuppressive medications or if you uh, are, are, have recently or are recently being treated for things like cancer or you have had a solid lung transplant. We don't have a good sense of what some of the variables are for natural immunity, but it does vary. The data seem to suggest that the people that have the strongest immune response are those people that have recovered from COVID-19 and then been vaccinated as well. That seems, at least at early stages, to be the most durable. All right, next question. How will we know when immunity fades? Well, there's a couple ways. One is ideally we'll have something that's called a correlate of protection. That's some biomarker, some measurement in your blood that would tell you this is a specific thing that provides you protection. And when it drops below a certain level, now you're no longer protected. Neutralizing antibodies might be a correlate of protection, but again, as I told you on the backside, that ultimately naturally declines over time. So that might not be the best. The other way we'll know is that we'll see an increase in infection or hospitalization of people with COVID-19. Currently, all those numbers are trending downward, but if we saw them trend up again, and they were specifically trending in people that had never been infected or had been immunized, then we would know that something has happened and that, we've, that immunity has waned. That's why continued tracking and surveillance becomes so important. Why we need to keep tracking the number of cases, the hospitalization. It's also why we need to keep tracking the variants that are in circulation around the globe and looking for those new variants. So, final question. What happens once we have immunity fade? Well, that really depends on a couple of things. If immunity has just faded, but there haven't been a whole set of new variants, then really it's likely that we'll get what is truly a booster shot. That's another dose of the existing vaccines. Now, it might be the same vaccine that you got the first time around. There's a number of studies in play looking at actually mixing it up and giving you a different booster from the vaccine that you currently got. On the flip side, if immunity fades because the virus has evolved new variants that now escape the existing immune response, a booster isn't going to do you any good. Now you're looking at some additional way to prime the immune system to recognize this altered virus. So that would be a modified vaccine. And there are a number of vaccine manufacturers that are looking at the possibility of modified vaccines, that are creating modified vaccines. Not because we need them right now, but because you want them available in the pipeline. That's a whole lot of content about how long will immunity last. The short answer is we don't know, but we've got some ways to track how we'll begin to see if and when it does fade and then what the next steps are. I hope you found this useful. Share this with other individuals that may be asking the same question about the length of immunity. Like almost everything else we've talked about with COVID-19, there are no simple yes or no answers. It's lots of nuance. Thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you on our next episode of Shareable Science Beyond the Blog.